okay so uh, we are uh, going to start today uh, the topic uh, on species of structures uh let you be a finite set so so we are going to look at uh, you know uh, the uh, the topic on species uh, of combinatorial structures so a combinatorial structure is basically any kind of construction uh, that you make on on a set okay so for example uh, if you have a set let's say uh, abc uh, then uh, you know you can you can uh, make a graph on this three vertices right for example you know like you can draw a, a graph uh, with uh, all the three forming a cycle right that you have seen or forming a path for just one edge and a one vertex any of uh, this is a graph on this three vertices right so you are basically putting a combinatorial structure uh, on a set u uh, in the sense that you are uh, you are constructing uh you know uh, something out of this set so the construction can be many things for example uh, given a finite set let's say u as you see here uh, if you have this set u then uh, uh, a is let's say 1 2 3 etc n right then the structure alpha let's say uh, can be uh, you know a set right uh, you can put a set structure on the on the you know the set itself uh a tree structure uh, on on the set right so you can take this and make a tree out of it by putting edges uh, you can make a cycle right putting them in some order and then connecting the uh, edges uh, you can make a permutation so just take any permutation of the elements you get a permutation of that uh, you can define functions on you right uh, elements uh, you know basically functions from uh, end of functions uh, or a rooted tree right you can put a rooted tree right uh, you know you can define one one node as special you know one of the vertices let's say two is special then uh, it has two or three children let's say uh, one three and seven then it has other children etc so you can define rooted trees you can define posit structure right uh, you can uh, put a derangement right derangement you have studied uh, are uh, uh, permutations uh, which does not map uh, elements uh, to itself, right? There is no fixed point. Uh, then uh, you can define a partition, right? Given a set, you can partition it. So all these can be uh, examples of structures. So I mean, there could be many, many, many more. So in 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 uh, in short, we are just uh, constructing structures on on a given set. Now. Uh, here is here is an example of two different structures on on the set ABCDEF, right? So ABCDEF is given, right? One set, and then you know you, we put a tree structure on this, right? So A to B is an edge, B to C, and B to D, B to E, and E to F. Uh, on the same set, I can put another structure, for example, uh, C to A, A to B, B to E, E to D. D to F and F to uh, C, which is a cycle. So now uh, you know. So these two are different type of structures, right? I mean, you one can say that one is a cycle, one is a tree. Right? So uh, you know the you can you can now say that like, you know I am interested in making only cycles, or I you can say that you are interested in only making trees. So. If you decide that you know we are going to have only uh, trees, then we say uh, structures of type uh, you know trees. So I can say that uh, for any any uh, any type of uh, structure that we are looking at, let's say F, uh, then you know you you look at all possible uh, finite sets, right? So take U is one set that we consider like one, two, three, etc., n or A, B, C, D, E, etc. Consider any such finite set, and then look at all possible <coughs> all possible structures of this type. Uh, for example, uh, trees. You are you are saying right. So all possible trees you can make on this uh, set of uh, uh, set of elements. Collect them together. 
for all possible finite sets this is called a species uh, of the type tree so now uh, similarly we can we can do this for any other object for example i can say species of uh, graphs or species of permutations right which consists of all possible uh, permutations you can make on all possible finite sets right now you collect together the set of all permutations let us say you can make on on a fixed set let's say u right so that i can denote by f of uh, u right so f of u is the set of uh, structures of type f uh, on u uh, so if, if it is the uh, collection of permutations then uh, it is the all possible permutations right uh, whatever is the cardinality of u that uh, you uh, cardinality of u factorial many permutations are there on the specific set u so that is uh, the set of structures of type uh, permutations uh, on on the set u right so f of u uh, in general denotes the set of structures of type f that is made on the set u now when we say uh, a structure alpha belongs to f of u right uh, we can write alpha in uh, f of u so that is the it, it means that alpha is an f structure on u right so so u is the set and uh, uh, alpha uh, is the structure of the type f that we are talking about whatever species right trees or uh, paths or uh, functions or posets or derangements whatever we are talking about that type of structure on u now uh, let us say that like you know you are looking at this uh, examples of uh, paths okay a b c is a path b a c is a uh, path a c b is a path uh, these be uh, uh, you know f structures okay on on the set abc now suppose we have a function f which maps let's say abc to uh, set 1 2 3 and uh, you know the function f takes a to 1 b to 3 and c to 2 let's say right now we know that if you if you look at the uh, type of f structures uh, on the set 1 2 3 there are you know there are uh, uh, there are corresponding uh, uh, objects there, right? But now, what we what we can observe is that if for any bijection f from you know uh, a b c to two, one two three, right? We have a bijection uh, from f of a b c to f of one two three. Right? So the corresponding bijection from f of a b c to f of one two three. So in this example, for example, uh, you know a b uh, a to b to c b to a to c and uh, a to c to b are there and uh, what does f of f do that maps a to b to c to 1 to 3 to 2 because a is mapped to 1 b is mapped to 3 and c is mapped to 2 by by f right uh, similarly b a c goes to 3 1 2 and a c b goes to 1 2 3 so this is something uh, you know one can one can intuitively feel right so whenever we have a bijection from a set u to a set v we can think of uh, a corresponding bijection from the set of all structures on u to the set of all structures on v where uh, you know this kind of uh, properties holds right like you know because fc is taken by this uh, the corresponding uh, uh, let us say labels uh, of uh, you know uh, of these objects can be uh, changed uh, suitably uh, to match the function so this is intuitively clear and uh, one can uh, in fact show it we will uh, skip the details uh, but uh, look at, let us look at one more uh, example right so you have this uh, uh, this uh, you know tree which is uh, with a vertex x going to y uh, going to a to b and c right then uh, you know this can be mapped to uh, let's say uh, vertex q going to p 2 3 and 4 and this uh, map right between two structures right can be uh, you know represented 
by of course the you know the, the bijection between the corresponding sets x y a b c and p q two three four where x is going to q p is going to y right y is going to p and uh, a going to two b going to three and c going to uh, four right so uh, yeah these kind of things are uh, intuitively clear now let us let us give a uh, you know uh, an example for uh, defining species so we have several ways of defining species so let us say uh, let us look at one example uh, in detail so we want to define the species g of uh, simple graphs so what is a simple graph simple graph is a uh, graph structure on uh, on a finite set of course we are looking at finite uh, objects uh, a simple graph uh, is, a, uh, is a, uh, it's a graph structure on uh, U, which means that there are edges, and the edges are two element subsets of uh, of uh, U, right? Right. Uh, unordered uh, pairs of uh, elements. Now, we define uh, the species as follows, right? So uh, you know the the structures on on the set U, I denote by G of U, right? Uh, where G is a species, so therefore G of U denotes the uh, the uh, all possible structures on the set U, uh, which belongs to the uh, which are simple graphs, right? Uh, which is given by set of all G, small G is such that uh, G is equal to let us say gamma comma U, where gamma is uh, you know is uh, a subset of uh, you know two element uh, subsets of u, unordered pairs of u. So one can see that gamma is basically the set of edges, right? And uh, elements of u form the vertices of the graph. Right? So we, we define the species by this. For you know whatever set you give me, this is the definition of the set of all structures on this. So therefore, since I can do it for any finite set, it tells me. Uh, all about the uh, species of graphs, simple graph. Right? So every graph can be generated given uh, any set. I can make uh, all possible uh, the set of all uh, possible graphs on this right? by this uh, definition. Now, what we can observe is that G is a simple graph on U, uh, and uh, you know G belongs to right uh, you know g of u and g is a g structure on u are all all uh, equivalent statements and uh, we we observe that for each bijection which takes uh, u to b right sigma map from u to b uh, that bijection induces uh, another bijection i mean another function let's say another map uh, g of sigma right which takes uh, elements from g of u to elements uh, in G of B, right? where where uh, small g, right, uh, a graph uh, is mapped to uh, sigma dot g, right, where sigma is the bijection right? uh, from uh, U to B. So this uh, function G of sigma is called the transport of uh, you know uh, of graphs, right, basically. The graphs on uh, you know graph structures on on the set U is uh, mapped to uh, graph structures on the set V. So therefore, this is basically transporting structures, right, uh, uh, from you know on one set which is defined on one set to uh, those defined on another set. Now, if uh, uh, you know if if uh, let's say a graph. Uh, is given by uh, gamma comma u, uh, and that graph is uh, one of the elements of uh, you know uh, g of u, right? The uh, uh, g structure on u. Then uh, g of sigma, right, which is the transport of the graph g, right? G sigma of g, small g, is basically uh, sigma dot g, right? Because that is what happens to g under sigma. And what is this? This is basically sigma uh, dot uh, gamma comma v because v is the set that you know uh, u is mapped to v so therefore vertices are going to be v rather than u and uh, sigma dot uh, gamma takes basically 
now relabel the uh, edges right uh, with the with the correct uh, numbers so uh, and, and and that is given by this uh, you know definition that sigma uh, dot gamma is the set of all pairs sigma of x comma sigma of y for uh, x y uh, an ordered uh, an unordered pair in, in 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 gamma right so whenever there is an edge x y right uh, you know sigma of x and sigma of y will be the corresponding uh, 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 you know a pair of elements that is going to make the edge uh, in the transported uh, structure now one can one can see that uh, you know the uh, the transport is just a reliability right from this example one one can see and you know in general one have an intuition that the transport of structures is just a reliability and because of this uh, we should be pretty clear that like you know if u and uh, v are two sets right and then you are looking at g of u and g of v right g of u is the set of all you know g structures on u g of v is the set of all g structures on v then if u and v if there is a bijection from u to v then uh, there must be a bijection from g of u to g of v in the sense that g of u and g of v must have the same number of uh, objects right if u to v there is a bijection then uh, it is kind of uh, can you know like intuitively clear why it should be uh, the case uh, therefore, one can feel that, uh, you know, G of sigma, the transport of sigma, right, uh, is basically uh, uh, a bijection also. And, and, and this also tells you that the, the, the cardinality of uh, G of u, right, uh, or cardinality of F of u for any, any species F, the cardinality of F of u, uh, only depends on on cardinality of u. It does not depend on what are the elements of u, right? Does, it doesn't matter what the names of the elements of u are, right? What are the elements of u? But if you have u and v, g of u and g of v depends only on cardinalities of u's and v's. Right? U and v. We also uh, see that because because the transport is just a relabeling, we can also see that you know g of uh, let's say tau composition sigma, where tau and sigma are uh, two bijections, uh, is basically g of tau composition g of sigma. And uh, if you look at the identity map, right, on, on u, look at the structures g on identity of u, right? Like, I mean, uh, look at the transport of uh, g of identity of u. And this transport must be the identity in g u, right? The g u is the set of all... Uh, uh, G structures on U, and since uh, you know the the transport function, uh, you know the, the the bijection sigma is just identity, the transport also must be identity on the corresponding uh, set. When if this is not true, then our we can we can say that like something will go wrong in our relabeling. So uh, these are all. I mean, I am not going in, uh, into uh, the details of this. We want to finish this as a just quick review of this topic. Just an introduction. Uh, so I will not go into detail, but uh, you can take it as homework to prove this. Now, uh, more formally, uh, the transport of uh, a structure uh, can be defined as follows. Let u and b be finite sets, and uh, f map from u to v be a, a bijection. Then, uh, then uh, that's a function. Uh, of course, f of f, right? Which uh, f of f, uh, which which maps f of u to f of v, right? Uh, which maps f of u to f of v, called the transport of f along uh, along f, right? So for different uh, bijections f, uh, you have different transports, right? That is clear. Now, uh, so this bijection, uh, this this function f of f, right? Uh, the transport of f uh, should satisfy the following that if 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 you have two uh, functions like two bijections f and g and if you look at the composition f composition g right so f of f composition g is equal to f of f composition f of g right the transport also composes uh, as the functions uh, or bijections are composed and f of identity of u is equal to identity in f of u, right? This is something we observe. 
So, in short, what we are saying uh, about a species is basically uh, is a rule. Okay, we can define species also as a rule that produces for each finite set u a finite set f of u. Right? This is something that we need to know. Right? When when we say I am looking at species of all graphs, you should know what are the uh, possible graph structures on on a finite set. Right? Without that, we cannot talk about uh, the species. So, a species is a rule that produces for any finite set u a finite set f of u, and for each bijection, right? Uh, from u to v, if u and v are two different sets, if for each bijection, uh, you can find a function f of sigma such that f of u uh, goes to f of v, where f of sigma satisfies the following conditions, right? Which are called functorial properties. Okay? For every uh, bijection, uh, sigma and tau, uh, sigma going from u to v and uh, tau going from v to w, right? You look at the uh, composition T composition sigma, right? So what does T composition, uh, tau composition sigma does? It takes uh, U to uh, W, right? So F of uh, tau composition sigma is basically uh, F of tau composition F of sigma, okay? So F of tau uh, composition F of, because F of sigma, right, is basically, uh, the you know the transport of uh, sigma along uh, along sigma uh, transport of sigma it takes elements of f of u to f of v right now though though what uh, what does f of tau does it takes uh, f, f elements of f of v right uh, to f of w right? so therefore uh, the transport uh, must be composed and for uh, the identity on on u right u going to u uh, f of id of u is equal to id of f of u. So these, these two properties, one and two here, are called the functorial properties. Right? So when we talk about categories uh, and functors, uh, you know, in category theory, uh, uh, you know, the functors best, uh, basically satisfy this, uh, this condition. So that's so-called functorial property. So we are not going to go into details of category theory. Uh, that all comes in a uh, specialized uh, course on this. Now, as a homework, uh, show that the transport of structures is a bijection if sigma is a bijection. So, for every bijection, uh, the transport is also a bijection. It is intuitively clear and uh, it shouldn't be very difficult to prove also. Now, uh, let me remark uh, that uh, one, you know, one can observe that uh, the notions of isomorphism, automorphism, uh, etc. Uh, of uh, you know uh, f structures whatever is the species right are implicitly contained in the definition of species this is something that you can observe by the way we have we have defined uh, these bijections right so the uh, you know this all comes uh, for free right isomorphism automorphism etc comes for free now uh, given uh, let's say uh, f uh, you know a species f and and a set u the cardinality of f of u, uh, this I mentioned before, depends only on cardinality of u, right? Because what are the labels does not matter. Now we we denote, uh, you know, there is there is a uh, there is an f structure on a set as follows, right? Let us say that a b c one three is a set, and uh, I am going to make uh, you know some uh, object of type f. So, and, and you know, like I'm looking at the species of, uh, you know, not species, like the f structures on, on this set. I'm going to denote uh, it uh, the following way. So, I, I write a, b, c, 1, 3 here, right? And then uh, I put these lines and then then by by this uh, arc, I mean, I mean that I am putting some f structure uh, uh, on this set, okay? So, it could be any of the structures. So, therefore, this represents that you know we are talking about all possible f structures uh, on this particular set. The same uh, can also be represented by by putting in a box all these points and putting just f to say that I am basically talking about all possible f structures, uh, you know all the all possible structures uh, that you can make on this particular set, uh, which is uh, of species f. And uh, you know when when uh, I'm, I don't want to uh, talk about specifically what are the elements, right? I mean I can also just uh, not write the uh, the set elements when the set is clear. 
I can just uh, put this without the labels. And this also tells that, okay, uh, whatever is the set uh, having this many elements, I am going to put uh, the structures. And uh, so these are just, you know, uh, notation that we can, we can use to, uh, to uh, describe uh, type F structures on, uh, on any, any set. Now, look at, let us look at some examples, okay? So a species E uh, of sets, okay? So we are talking about the species of sets, right? So given any finite set U, right? What is uh, E of U, right? We are putting a set structure. So when I say E of U, right, it means that I am talking about structures of type E, right? Which are sets uh, on the set U, right? So I want to put a set structure on U. How do we put an F, a set structure on U? Just look at the set uh, U, right? So there is only one way to put a set structure on U, right? But basically, that set itself is the. So basically, the elements, right? So elements of uh, this uh, E of U are the sets on U, right? There is only one set on U because U is a set, and I, I want to make a set structure using all the elements, right? If I am using a small uh, uh, you know, uh, subset of the element, then that is not the set structure on U, it's a subset on, set structure on the subset. So therefore, E of U is just singleton U, where you know, the, the element within uh, this U are, within the, within the brackets, are the, uh, are the objects of the type that we are talking about. Right? So there is only one way to do that, that is putting uh, U within a singleton. So that is the species of sets. Now species of elements I can talk about, right? Given a set U, I can talk about the elements. So that is E of U, right? So small e or epsilon uh, is used for this. Uh, uh, let's say epsilon. So epsilon of U uh, is the species of, uh, you know, uh, I mean the elements of, uh, not elements, the, yeah, uh, the, the objects of uh, type elements uh, of the given set U and that structure on U, right? So we are talking about all possible elements of U. Now this forms, uh, you know, the set of all these elements is the set U itself because I am talking about the elements of U and forming the set, right? Uh, I get uh, U itself. So therefore E of U is basically U itself. I can talk about the species of singletons, right? One element sets. So what is x of u? Given any set u, x of u is basically a singleton u if uh, there is only one element in u. If there is more than one element, I cannot put any uh, structure. So therefore, it is just empty. Right? So that is the species of singletons. I can define species by geometric descriptions now, right? So I can I can talk about species of polygons, right? Let's say p as follows that you know p uh, you know so so I, I just define a set let's say five elements here put a structure and say that okay this is uh, you know a, a structure on five elements this is a structure on six elements etc right so this uh, geometric descriptions tells you how to make uh, uh, more polygons uh, given given any set how do you make polygons right so uh, that tells you how to do it therefore uh, this also uh, can be used to uh, define a species now species uh, of endo functions okay so what is endo function if endo functions are functions from a set to itself right so species of endo functions will be denoted by e and d is basically the uh, pair uh, let's say uh, psi comma u uh, and that belongs to E end of you know end of, end of functions on U. If and only if psi is uh, a, a, you know uh, an element of U cross U, and for every x, right? Uh, for every x, x belongs to U implies you can find uh, a unique y uh, in in U itself, right? Uh, y in U uh, and uh, x comma y is in 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 inside right so because psi is this uh, you know ordered pair uh, where uh, you know x1 x comma y basically tells you uh, you know where uh, x is mapped to and therefore y must be unique right 
so this is you know this is the set theoretic uh, description uh, of the uh, species of endo functions now as a homework you can show that uh, if uh, sigma mass from u to v is a bijection then you know uh, the end uh, of sigma the transport of sigma uh, uh, of of uh, you know uh, let's say psi is basically sigma composition psi composition sigma inverse whenever psi is an endo function right, on u so for any uh, endo function psi on u right the the trans it is transported uh, to sigma composition uh, psi composition sigma inverse by uh, by uh, any bijection sigma so this you can take it as a homework now another way to describe a species is by uh, using uh, the help of algorithms right because some you know sometimes it may may not be easy to define an object okay so uh, you know you may be talking about for example uh, uh, the the outputs uh, of an algorithm right you know, some algorithm is there that can that can uh, produce uh, given a set it can produce uh, you know objects of a particular type whatever we want and these outputs are let's say objects uh, of interest so i want to talk about the you know the species of all objects that is created by this algorithm so given any finite set u the algorithm produces etc uh, all possible uh, structures of a particular type right whatever it is and i can now define uh, you know the species by uh, looking at the outputs of algorithm what are the things that is produced by this algorithm that forms a species so let be be an algorithm that on an input uh, uh, let's say set u right uh, produces uh, b of u the set of all uh, binary let's say rooted trees on u right where we you know the algorithm produces binary root trees on u okay now uh, then the algorithm b can be used to define the species of binary root trees right for example uh, you know b can be uh, like uh, you know defining on on the set u right a b c d e f uh, is a set u and produces some uh, you know uh, set of all structures and in particular one of the output let's say alpha belong to b of u was the following right it is this the uh, this was the output right so it, it says you know empty set comma uh, b uh, within bracket uh, uh, comma within bracket phi uh, you know empty set comma uh, d comma empty set and uh, c uh, then uh, again uh, empty set comma a comma within two brackets empty set f comma empty set uh, then uh, phi okay now um, then uh, there is a comma and e comma phi okay, so the comma is missing uh, now uh, now now when you are talking about uh, let us say uh, this structure this structure is a binary tree uh, if you look at this uh, you know the way to produce this is by you know uh, by looking at this uh, uh, nodes right so each of these elements uh, denotes nodes and whenever uh, a pair is there that forms uh, the edge relation so phi comma b uh, basically becomes uh, an edge from b to uh, the empty set which is the represented by box here uh, and uh, similarly uh, if you follow through entire thing you will see that this uh, basically represents uh, this binary tree okay now uh, and, and c will be the root of this okay so you will see all these thing uh, Uh, if you if you work through the example uh, more carefully now as a remark uh, i want to say that a species uh, is simply a functor right uh, let's say uh, f uh, taking uh, you know elements from b to e where b is the category of uh, finite sets and bijections and e is the category of finite sets and functions okay so a species is just a functor okay if you if you are uh, talking in terms of category theory okay uh, we are not going into category theory because to even define all these things it will take time and we don't have that time so if you are not familiar with that just uh, forget about it uh, just a remark uh, the species is just a functor uh, from the category of finite sets and bijections to the category of uh, uh, finite sets and functions 
now uh, some homework questions uh, describe the transport of functions uh, for the species uh, e of sets uh, species e of elements and species x of singletons okay uh, so basically uh, you have to uh, see what happens uh, whenever a bijection is given uh, and what will be the transport corresponding we, we for example gave the example uh, of graphs right and species g of graphs and then what happened to the uh, what happened to the transport right for any sigma what was happening we mentioned uh, in the example that we are looking at uh, with the graphs right so yeah so here we said what happened to g of sigma right so what was the transport so this way we have to uh, we have to mention what happens uh, to uh, the transport for each of the questions uh, each of the uh, species in the question okay second question is uh, to uh, define and the species gc of connected graphs uh, the species t of directed graphs and species par of partitions so all these uh, you know species you can define right uh, try in your own words and let's see how uh, uh, good uh, that is that question is to define species uh, e, INV of involution, uh, uh, species S of permutations, and species L of uh, linear orders, okay, and species C of cycles. So we, we have already come across most of these things uh, earlier, so I, I don't want to go into uh, any more details of uh, what are these things and all, right? Now, let me define what is uh, what are the generating series. So we can associate several series uh, with uh, species, and uh, we want to look at uh, these uh, uh, series in, in in detail. Okay. So first, we are going to define what is the exponential generating function uh, of the species f. So what is that? So given uh, given a species f, we mentioned that the cardinality of f of uh, u for any finite set u only depends on the cardinality of u right so therefore i can just talk about a fixed set 1 2 3 as i n as an n element set so if i if i am talking about all the n element sets then the cardinality uh, of f of u for any n element set u is actually equal to the cardinality of f of set 1 to n right because that is also another n element set and this cardinality right the number of uh, structures of type f on an n element set is denoted by fn, small fn. Now, uh, as we know, uh, to form generating series, right, we can basically uh, you know, multiply by x raised to n, and then uh, you know, depending on how uh, fn grows, we will either normalize by n factorial or something like that. So here we are going to do that. So we, we define f of x as summation overall n greater than 0, fn x ratio n by n factorial. And this, uh, as we have seen in the case of generative function, is called the exponential generating function of the species f. Okay, so this basically counts fn, and then if you want to recover fn, you have to just find out the coefficient of x ratio n by n factorial uh, uh, in f of x. Now, uh, what is that? This is basically, uh, uh, you know, uh, using Taylor series expansion. Whenever you are given the function f of x, you can use Taylor series expansion, and then uh, find out uh, uh, by, by multiply by n factorial, right? Look at the coefficient of x raised to n in f of x, and uh, that is basically what is that? Uh, by Taylor series, it is uh, d raised to n f of x by dx raised to n, evaluated at x equal to zero, right? So therefore, uh, or, or if you want, you can say Maclaurin series, uh, it doesn't matter. So expansion at, uh, you know, uh, evaluate at x equal to zero, and that is going to give you uh, f of n, uh, uh, fn. Now, a formal power series in any number of variables is expressed, right? So, you know, you can talk about formal power series in one variable, two variables, or infinitely many variables. So if you have infinitely many variables, you can just define it as follows, right? X of let's say x1, x2, etc., etc., right? Is summation overall uh, tuples n1, n2, uh, n3, etc., right? 
x n1 n2 n3 etc then x1 ratio n1 x2 ratio n2 etc whatever was that same uh, tuple right n1 n2 n3 etc divided by c n1 n2 uh, etc the same uh, tuple of elements where uh, this c n1 n2 is a uh, given family of non zero scalars right in our case it was uh, n factorial here it could be anything else here right so that kind of thing is basically a formal uh, power series and uh, you, you know you can generalize it to any number of variables as you please now uh, here are some uh, examples of species again so s uh, is the species of permutations and what is s of x uh, the generating function s of x is 1 by 1 minus x why because we know that the number of permutations right uh, on an element set is basically n factorial so because it is uh, we have n factorial of them uh, you know summation n factorial by n factorial is going to be summation 1 which is uh, the series 1 by 1 minus x right. uh, then uh, if you talk about the species of linear orders right so we know that there is also n factorial many linear orders so l of x uh, is also uh, 1 by 1 minus x where l of x is the exponential generality function for the species of linear orders Uh, C of x is the cycle species, right? Cyclic permutations. Uh, then, what is that? It is basically summation. We know that there is n minus one factorial of them, so therefore you will get uh, uh, minus uh, log of uh, one minus x, uh, which is which is uh, uh, which follows from uh, this summation, right? N minus one factorial by n factorial into x raised to n. Similarly, can you find out the uh, uh, you know uh, the exponential generality function for the species E of sets, uh, the species uh, epsilon of elements, species P of power sets, uh, and uh, species X of singletons, and species G of uh, graphs, simple graphs. So take it as an exercise and try to find out uh, what are the generating functions or generating series. Now, so we are talking about so far the uh, you know counting the uh, objects of uh, you know objects of uh, uh, you know a, a particular species that you can make on 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 a set uh, U with let's say n elements. Right? Now there could be several uh, objects you know when 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 I use the set the, you know the set relabeling right there could be several of them it may be isomorphic so there will be several isomorphic structures so when I talk about you know uh, graphs on uh, the set 1, 2, 3, 4, you will have several graphs, but several of them could be uh, uh, could be isomorphic. Now, I don't want to, let's say that count all the, uh, you know, uh, all these isomorphic things separately. I want to just find out how many different, you know, uh, inequivalent structures are there, right? So, for that, uh, I can consider the isomorphism class, right? Isomorphism types of F, uh, F uh, structures, you know which is f uh, like this on on the set uh, let's say f of n right so take any n element set uh, one to n let's say here uh, look at f of n and then we can look at the isomorphism types of this uh, you know this type uh, on uh, on f of n right on this set now let me define uh, an equivalence relation uh, as follows right so what is the equivalence relation tilde? It says that uh, for uh, any two structures S and T uh, in F of N, right? Uh, uh, S is the equivalent to T if and only if I can find a bijection uh, from uh, you know the set one to N to itself, such that uh, F of pi, the transport of pi, right, uh, takes S to T, right? The structure of uh, type S, I mean, structure S of type F to structure T of type, right? So if that is true, so if you can find such a bijection pi, then we say that S and T are basically, uh, you know, equivalent. That they are isomorphic. That is the idea. Okay. Now, an isomorphism type of uh, F structures uh, of uh, a fixed order, let's say n and uh, n, n element set, is an equivalence class. Uh, 
of uh, the equivalence class in uh, tilde on f of f. So the equivalence classes are called isomorphism types. Okay. So it basically, uh, you know, uh, f of uh, n uh, uh, mod uh, uh, tilde, right? So the equivalence classes. So let me denote uh, this by t of f of n. Then uh, t of f, right? For this is for an n element uh, set. You are, you know, doing this, right? So for all possible uh, structures, we have t of f now, uh, summation over all n, right, t of f, right, so n greater than 0, you take a uh, 0, f1, f2, etc., right, which are uh, structures of type, uh, type, uh, uh, type f on an n element set, and then uh, you are looking at the, uh, the equivalence classes uh, of these structures. Now, let me denote by small uh, f n tilde uh, as the number of isomorphism types of f, right? How many distinct, uh, you know, uh, type of uh, structures are there? Then the isomorphism class uh, generating uh, series, which is called, uh, uh, you know, f tilde of uh, uh, n uh, is the ordinary power series. Uh, f tilde of n is equal to uh, f tilde of x. Sorry, uh, f tilde of x is equal to uh, is equal to summation over all n uh, f n bar of uh, you know uh, f n bar uh, times x raised to n. This is the ordinary power series, not the exponential power series. Because when you are talking about uh, you know isomorphism types, right? You know we are just counting the class. Uh, how many classes are there? Usually the numbers grow much smaller. Right. So therefore, we don't uh, want to use uh, exponential generating series. So then we have the ordinary power series. And uh, uh, Fn tilde is now, uh, uh, is, uh, is basically the cardinality of uh, T of uh, Fn, right? So T of Fn was uh, Fn uh, of n, right, on the set 1 to n, uh, you know, uh, modulo uh, the equivalence relation. <coughs> So examples, right? So for example, uh, L uh, tilde of x, right? You know, you're looking at linear orders. L tilde of x is 1 by 1 minus x because, you know, when we are arranging objects, right, you have n factorial many ways to do that. But if you consider all of them to be identical, right, you, you know, the, the labeling is not important, then whichever order that you are going to put in a line, it is exactly the same line. So there is only one way to do that. And because of this summation, you know, uh, you know, x raised to n and reduces to 1 by 1 minus x. So then, therefore, we get that the isomorphism uh, type uh, generating function for uh, the linear orders is uh, 1 by 1 minus x. Right? Now, if you look at, uh, you know, the uh, cycle permutations, right, c tilde of x. Now, what is c tilde of x? Can you show that it is actually equal to x by 1 minus x, right? So it basically, uh, uh, it basically is, uh, you know, uh, is a shift by 1 uh, for uh, L, L, L tilde of f. And can you, can you connect this uh, and see why, why this is this? Similarly, uh, if you look at uh, E tilde of x, right? Uh, e is the species of uh, sets. So what is E tilde of x? So I am putting, uh, you know, putting, uh, you know, a set uh, structure on you. So it does not matter, and there is only one. So therefore, it does not matter whether uh, it's uh, labeled or not, right? So you will still get a, a, a set uh, with just one and one. The count is going to be exactly one. So it will also be 1 by 1 minus x. What is the species of elements? Again, can you show that it is actually x by 1 minus x? Okay. Uh, if p is the species of power set, what is p tilde of x? Okay. Show that it is actually 1 by 1 minus x whole square. Now, even more interesting is that, you know, s tilde of x, Right, what was S? S is the species of permutation, and uh, we can show that S tilde of x is equal to product k is equal to 1 to infinity 1 by 1 minus x raised to k. 
Now, what you can see from this is that S tilde uh, was this uh, function. On the other hand, L tilde was just 1 by 1 minus x. Now, uh, when we are looking at linear orders and permitted, right, we can uh, we often have this tendency to see them as kind of the same thing, right? You know, we are permuting uh, objects and uh, we are, uh, you know, arranging them in, you know, in n factorial different ways. Uh, since there is a bijection between these two, we think that, you know, they are uh, kind of the same thing, right? Often uh, there is a mistake can feeling that linear orders are uh, and are the same as permitted. On the other hand, this uh, tells you that, you know, the when, when we look at the uh, uh, unlabeled structures, right, the isomorphism classes, uh, we see that, you know, they are indeed different objects because S tilde of X is actually uh, very different from uh, L, L tilde of X. Uh, then, uh, you know, uh, for uh, singletons, x tilde of x again is equal to x. Uh, these things uh, you can try to derive uh, these identities uh, as a homework. Now, <clears throat> some remarks. Uh, s of, yeah, so this is something that I already remarked that s of x is equal to l of x equal to 1 by 1 minus x. Uh, but s tilde of x uh, is different from l, l tilde of x. Thus, permutations are actually different from linear orders. Now, let us look at the cycle index series. Okay. So, maybe maybe I should just mention uh, mention uh, one more thing, right? See, s of x uh, and l of x was one by one by one minus x, right? But see, if you look at l of x, uh, l of x was one by one minus x, and l bar of x was uh, l tilde of x was also one by one minus. X. This should not uh, confuse you, right? Uh, because, uh, because uh, you know, here L of x is 1 by 1 minus x because it was the exponential uh, generating uh, function. And we were actually dividing, uh, you know, by n factorial. On the other hand, here we have the ordinary generating function where uh, we are not dividing by n factorial. Therefore, the count is 1, right? And there it was n factorial, we made it 1 by dividing by n factorial. So these two are indeed very different, right? Uh, L of x and L bar of x. One is exponential generated function, uh, which is 1 by 1 minus x by chan, and uh, L tilde of x is also 1 by 1 minus x, but which is the ordinary generating function. Now, uh, because these are uh, different, we, we see that permutations are different uh, from linear orders as species. Now, finally, I want to introduce uh, one more series associated with any uh, with the species, which is called the cycle index series. Okay. So, to define that, uh, let us uh, first define uh, uh, and look at the following. So, u is a finite set, and sigma is a permutation on uh, of u. Okay. Uh, where sigma, uh, the permutation has the cycle type. So, we studied this, uh, you know, uh, in our class earlier. Uh, cycle type. Uh, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, etc., where sigma uh, k in general is the number of uh, uh, k cycles in sigma, right? So, sigma k counts the number of k cycles in sigma. Now, if, if you are given, uh, uh, you know, an n element uh, uh, set, right, u, then uh, we will see that this, uh, you know, the cycle type, right, uh, will all be 0 after the nth time, right? Sigma n, uh, uh, n plus 1 onwards will all be 0. This is something uh, immediately clear. There cannot be a cycle of larger uh, length. Now, uh, we denote by small fix of sigma as the cardinality of fix of sigma, where fix of sigma, as we saw earlier again, right, was the uh, the number of elements fixed by uh, the permutation sigma, right, which is actually equal to sigma 1, right, which is basically the number of uh, unit cycles, right? Single types, uh, single cycles in in the permutation, uh, the representation of permutation of cycles. Now, the cycle index series of a species uh, uh, f of structures is the formal power series uh, in an infinite number of variables, of course. Uh, Z f of x one, x two, x three, x star is equal to summation over all n uh, greater than or equal to zero. 
1 by n factorial, you should be able to see where this is coming from, right? Summation overall uh, sigma belong to Sn. Fix of f of sigma, x1 ratio sigma 1, x2 ratio sigma 2, etc. Et right? I mean, so this is something, uh, it should be pretty clear where these uh, objects are coming from, what these objects mean. From our uh, short excursion, uh, we did to polya theory, right? So we we, uh, we we don't go into the details further. Uh, uh, think about this and try to understand. If you have any questions, come back to me. Now, uh, here is some examples I am going to give. I am not going to go into details how I obtained this uh, or how we obtained this. Uh, it it takes a lot of time to explain many of these things, but uh, you should be able to work out the details for at least some of these uh, examples. So as a homework, you can try to figure out why uh, they are the same. So if you look at the cycle index series of the linear sectors, right, linear orders, the ZL of X1, X2, etc. is 1 by 1 minus X1. Okay. Now, uh, on, on the other hand, uh, if you look at the uh, cycle index series of the species of uh, permutations, that is actually 1 by 1 minus X1 into 1 minus X2 into etc. It uh, goes on. What is the uh, cycle index series of the species E of sets? It is uh, E to the power x1 plus x2 by 2 plus x3 by 3 plus etc. Okay. Okay. Try to see why this is the case. Okay. So it should, it should be pretty clear uh, once you understand what is this exponent's meaning. Okay. And uh, how you you know you connect it with the uh, cycle types that we are talking about earlier, sigma, sigma one, sigma two, etc. And uh, if you do that, you should be able to figure out why why this uh, indeed uh, makes sense. Then, as Homer derived the cycle index for the species uh, uh, epsilon of uh, elements. Uh, second question is to prove that uh, f of x is equal to Right, so f of x was the uh, the exponential generating function for the species f, uh, and this you can obtain directly from the cycle index uh, by substituting uh, that uh, with uh, where the first index has x and everything else is zero. So x one goes to x, right? X two is x three is by zero. So if you substitute this in z f, you should get uh, f of x. Right? Let us look at one example. Right. Here, uh, if you substitute for, you know, this is just x, so I will get 1 by 1 minus x, and that is precisely the, uh, precisely the, uh, the, uh, what is called, uh, precisely the uh, exponential generating function for uh, the linear orders, right? Then, uh, f tilde of x, also you can obtain from the cycle index. So, cycle index contains so much more information than what is contained in uh, contained in uh, you know the exponential generating function and the type generating function because you can get both of this directly by just uh, simple substitutions for example uh, f tilde of x is set uh, of x x square x cube etc so you just replace x i with x raised to i right and uh, in in z f and you will get uh, f tilde of x so the type generating function can be in fact, to compute the type generating function for uh, uh, most of the uh, species, you need to go through the, uh, finding the ZF and then do this. It's not uh, immediately uh, uh, clear how to count the uh, type generating function without uh, using uh, the help of uh, the cycle index. I mean, for, for some things like, you know, uh, linear orders and all, we know immediately, but uh, uh, but otherwise, it is not uh, very uh, direct. So, uh, prove these two statements. Okay? And these are not very difficult. You know, just uh, substituting this and you will see what is happening there. And uh, using some of the observations that we have before, uh, you should be able to uh, do this. Now, let me define operations on, on species. Okay? So, what do I mean by operations on species? So, I am talking about... Uh, I'm talking about uh, uh, you know addition uh, uh, you know or sum 
products, uh, you, know, you know, taking derivatives or exponentiations, compositions, and all kind of thing uh, we can talk about. So what is uh, what is the meaning of sum of uh, two species? So okay, so given uh, species f and g, right? Uh, f plus g uh, of u, right? So see, this is the basic, uh, you know. Uh, Way to define uh, any uh, object on a species. Given any finite set u, you know the species tells you, uh, you know the rule to generate uh, f g. I mean whatever the species of uh, u for any finite set u, right? So therefore, f plus g of u should tell you how to do that. And what is this? Uh, I define this as the uh, disjoint uh, union uh, f of u plus g of u. So f plus g of u is f of u plus g of u, where I, I consider the disjoint union in the sense that, you know, it is possible that uh, the species f and g are such that for uh, some elements, for example, on the empty set or something else, it might create the same kind of uh, objects. But I want to distinguish them by, by marking it as the elements uh, coming from uh, the species f and uh, uh, the elements coming from G, right? So I want to make sure that the union is disjoint. So uh, I can uh, do this by especially marking, you know, each uh, uh, type uh, F uh, structure with, uh, you know, with a marker that it is coming from F and each uh, G type structure uh, as, uh, with another marker to say that it is coming from G. So this way I can make the disjoint union. And what is the disjoint union uh, looking like? It is basically, right? So f plus g on this structure is uh, in the picture, pictorial manner. It is basically uh, an f structure on on the same set plus a g structure on the same set, right? So all possible f structures here you can make, and all possible g structures you can make on the same set, and all of them put together is basically the f plus g structures on 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 the set uh, we are looking at. And uh, if Cn is the number of uh, structures on, on an element set uh, of type f plus g, and a n and b n are the corresponding number of uh, type uh, uh, f elements and g elements on uh, on the same set, then Cn must be equal to a n plus b n because if we are doing this, uh, this should be the case. Right? So what we want is that Cn is actually equal to a n plus b n, and for every function or every bijection from u to v. We should have uh, we should have uh, the transport uh, again a bijection uh, which takes uh, you know uh, f plus g of u to f plus g of v right this should be uh, again intuitively clear so we want this also and we also want the functions right uh, to be added right the generating function should be added the exponential generating functions uh, should be added together. So an example is the species of uh, sets. E is the species of sets. Then, um, what is the uh, generating function for E, which is E raised to x? Okay. We we uh, saw this, or uh, you can prove this. Now we know that E raised to x actually equal to cos h of x plus sine h of x, right? Something that we have studied, and you know in calculus. But what is even more interesting is that, you know, now the species. Uh, e can be written as the sum of two species, right? Uh, which is the set of all even sets and set of all odd sets, right? So the species of even sets and species of odd sets. Now, what is the generating function for the species of even sets? That is actually cos h of x. And the generating function for the species of odd sets is sin h of x. So since E is equal to, right, so any set is basically either an even set or an odd set. And the uh, generating function for uh, even set is this and generating function for odd set is this. We should have this identity, right? E raised to x must be equal to cos h of x plus sin h of x. So, uh, you know, if, if, you know, if you find it easier to prove that, uh, you know, uh, e, e is this and e o is this, then you have another proof uh, of this identity or using this identity you have a proof of this. I mean all these things one can do. Now a family, uh, you know, uh, 
fi of species uh, is said to be summable family uh, if for any finite set u okay fi of u right uh, the fi type uh, right uh, of uh, uh, objects on u uh, is uh, empty except for a finite number of indices in i right so if there are infinitely many uh, you know so the i i could be an infinite family right but uh, if only for finitely many such i's fi can be uh, defined right and for everything else it is basically empty then uh, we say the family is summable because when we sum over all these things we want to still uh, remain in the domain of uh, finite numbers right we, we are always talking about finite sets you know and the finite set of objects and finite set of objects that you can make out of this finite set of objects so therefore we want to always stay in the uh, uh, finite domain so we will say that okay a family is summable right uh, if uh, uh, you know in in that family right uh, indexed by i only finitely many uh, i is uh, define uh, any objects and everything else uh, produces uh, empty so then uh, you know we have that uh, summation uh, overall i fi uh, of u is uh, basically the union of uh, fi of u uh, cross i so this fi of u cross i the cross i is basically used to make sure that uh, you know we are uh, we are looking at uh, we are uh, looking at disjoint union okay so that is the only purpose of that and uh, whenever this is empty we don't have anything here in the in the product and uh, uh, and this also satisfies that you know uh, if whenever there is a bijection sigma right so some you know summation fi uh, of sigma the transport uh, of the summation uh, of uh, uh, s comma i is basically you know uh, the structure uh, uh, in in i is uh, uh, you know is uh, defined by the transport fi uh, of sigma uh, of s comma i where i is just the index marker right just to uh, differentiate uh, the objects coming from fi now uh, you know this is a general setting and for the special uh, case uh, we have this canonical decomposition uh, when when we want to separate uh, the uh, elements uh, that we are making right you know the the structures that we are making on on uh, sets of uh, different cardinality so if when you are looking at the uh, set u and you are looking at the n element uh, uh, set u uh, and uh, uh, you know so what we want to uh, say is that like fn is basically going to look at the uh, the type f structures that you make on n element sets only right so fn of u is basically f of u if uh, uh, u has n elements precisely and if u has more or less elements uh, there is nothing that you can define on uh, no, that that belongs to fn right uh, so this way we can always uh, decompose so uh, the family f is now right the species f is the sum of the species f0 f1 uh, f2 etc where fi is the species uh, uh, made uh, out of uh, an i element set, right? The species or the structures of type F made out of i element sets. So only i element sets can produce uh, elements in F i. So because of this, we know that uh, you know there is only finitely many indices, and therefore uh, we directly follows from the above property that we have uh, the summability, and therefore I can write it as the disjoint union of F zero plus F one plus etc. So example uh, is uh, you know you are looking at uh, polygons uh, you know polygon with uh, you know zero elements one element two elements three elements etc and then uh, all of them together form the species of all polygons. Now we quickly look at uh, the product of two species. So f and g are species. I did not by f dot g the product species uh, f g. So what is the product species f g? It's generating function fg of x is the product of the generative function so we want this and we are going to define the product as uh, uh, 
something that works out for uh, this property to hold. Okay. So what is uh, Cn? Cn is the number of uh, you know elements of uh, uh, type f dot g on an n element set. Okay. And that is precisely equal to summation k equal to zero to n. N choose k, a k, b n minus k. So this all we we saw when we defined the product of uh, exponential generic functions, right? And what is what is this? So the product of two species is uh, denoted in pictorial way as follows. You have this set, right? Uh, and you are putting an f dot g structure on this, which is equivalent to taking the same set, right? Finding some subset, putting an f structure on this subset, looking at the complement, right? Or, or the, you know, uh, of uh, this, and putting a g structure on the remaining elements, right? So, uh, this picture tells, uh, you know, uh, much more things that uh, uh, one can express in uh, in words. How how the product, uh, you know, species looks like is very clear from the picture, right? So, basically, uh, you know, when we are looking at the product, it's basically partitioning the set U to two sets U1 and U2, right? Put an F structure on U1 and a G structure on U2, right? And uh, then, uh, uh, because of this, we know that uh, what happens uh, to f, f dot g on u is basically uh, the the different ways you can do this to u1 and u2, right? f of u1 and uh, f of u2, uh, you are looking at the Cartesian product. And this will be our structures, right? The structures will be of this type, f of u1 cross g of u2. And some over all this u1, u2, right, which are basically partitions of u2, uh, two sets. And uh, that should give you the species f dot g, right? And what happens to uh, a per, you know uh, uh, a permutation sigma or, or a bijection sigma? The bijection sigma is taken right by f dot g, right? Uh, the product uh, a sigma, the transport of sigma under this product uh, is basically what happens to uh, an element s, right? Uh, an object of type uh, f dot g. Now, what is s? S is a product, uh, you know, is an object of type f of g. But we know that uh, any such s is basically uh, of this type, right? f of u1 cross g of u2. So therefore, it has actually two components, right? So let us say that that is basically, uh, uh, you know, f and g, right? So uh, small f and small g. So if s is small s is f comma g, then uh, you know, this sigma must act uh, as, uh, you know, separately on f and g, where sigma i is the projection of sigma, right? The restriction of sigma to uh, just ui, right? So sigma i acts on the entire, uh, you know, u1 cross u2, but the restriction of sigma to, uh, you know, u1 or u2 will give you sigma 1 and sigma 2. So f dot g of this uh, sigma is basically f of sigma 1, right? So what happens to uh, sigma 1 under f, right? The transport of sigma 1 in f and uh, of f, right? f is basically a structure in f of u1. And similarly, g of sigma 2 of g, where g is a structure of g of u2. And uh, g of sigma 2 is the transport of sigma 2 uh, with respect to g. So this is something that uh, uh, will be satisfied, that should be satisfied. So let, let us look at a very interesting example. Okay, so we look at the uh, example of permutation, right? So permutations are uh, the species of permutations that do not by s, and we know that uh, permutations are basically basically cycles, right? Basically cycles. So you know, so you have uh, you have several uh, cycles here, right? And these cycles uh, define the permutations. Now, we, we observe that, like, you know, in this permutation, we have, you know, we have these cycles uh, with more than one element, right? And there could be some cycles with just one element. So, we collect all the cycles with one element, put them together. Since, uh, you know, the one cycle does nothing, right? It maps to itself. These are basically elements which does nothing else, right? So, I collect them together, it forms a set, right? So, I form a set, partition U1, right? Uh, and then, then you have the, you know, the cycles where you have at least two elements, right? Now, where all the cycles have two elements, 
the product of such cycles will be a permutation where no element is fixed so therefore they are called the derangement right derangement is a permutation without any fixed points so therefore we see that we can see any permutation as basically a possibly uh, empty uh, set uh, of uh, elements together with uh, uh, you know uh, derangements right so we see that uh, you know the species of permutations is basically the product of the species e of uh, sets and the species der of derangements right because given any permutations i can i can uh, i can do this right i can basically look at the one cycles form uh, form a, a set out of all of these elements and then the remaining uh, larger cycles uh, defines a derangement and in, on the other hand given any set uh, and uh, any derangement right right like uh, uh, of the remaining uh, elements i can put them together and it defines uh, defines a permutation Right, of all the elements so therefore there is uh, one to one correspondence and then we see that the species of uh, species of uh, permutations is the product of species of sets and derangements now this helps us to compute uh, for example uh, the uh, generative function for derangements if we know uh, what is the generative function for s and d right so we com computed this earlier so s is equal to e dot der and therefore derangement is equal to s divided by e right what is s divided by e s of x by e of x what is s of x by e of x s of x is e raised to minus x uh, no s of x is 1 by 1 minus x and uh, e of x is e raised to x so therefore i get e raised to minus x by 1 minus x now what is e raised to minus x if you expand it it is a mention minus 1 raised to i x raised to i by a factorial uh, where i uh, greater than equal to 0 and summation uh, x raised to j where j greater than equal to 0 for 1 by 1 minus x right this is the uh, geometric sequence now the product of these two right we can immediately find because the coefficients here are just ones right so therefore what is the product of these two and you are looking at the coefficient of x raised to n by n factorial that is basically n factorial into uh, look at uh, the terms which are going to contribute to x raised to n, right? I have to take some element from here and the remaining uh, numbers uh, should come from here so that j plus i must be equal to n, right? So if I collect them all together, I know that there could be at most n plus 1 terms. So 1 minus 1 by 1 factorial plus 1 by 2 factorial uh, minus etc. Uh, minus 1 raised to n by n factorial. So this you will get from here and therefore dn is basically this right n factorial into 1 minus 1 by 1 minus uh, 1 by uh, 1 factorial plus 1 by 2 factorial plus etc and this is the formula for dn we calculated earlier using principle of inclusion and exclusion but now here we without using any such uh, thing we can directly compute the formula just by looking at the generated function for uh, the uh, permutations and sets so this is a nice way to uh, compute uh, other uh, generative functions which are not easy to uh, combine. Another example is the power set, set of all uh, power sets on a set U is basically uh, the product of E with itself, right? So E is the species of sets, so species of sets with itself. And why is this? This should be clear because any subset is basically partitioning uh, a, a set U to U1 and U2. Right, one one is to keep and the other one is to draw. Right, that forms a subset. So basically, power set of X is basically the product of uh, E with itself, and uh, that should also make sense because we get E raised to two X. Right, the number of uh, uh, objects of uh, you know this type is basically uh, you know if you look at the coefficient uh, of uh, X raised to n, it will be two raised to uh, two raised to n. Right. Uh, on the other hand, when it is e raised to x, it is just uh, this one. There is only one uh, set structure on this. So you will get uh, this directly from here. Okay, so with that example, I will stop for today. Then uh, we will uh, we will continue with more examples. Uh, you know, more examples of uh, more operations uh, on species. And uh, with that, uh, uh, let me stop today.